Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Old Boy, movie from 2003, written and directed by Park Chan-wook. Actually, uh, it says characters created by uh, Park Chan-wook. So I don't know how much he... I guess this is based on a a, a comic, a manga. Uh, So crazy. Anyway... Didn't know that just right now in the moment, finding that out. Either way, Old Boy is a movie that I absolutely love. I have not seen this movie in probably close to a decade, maybe a decade. It has been a while since I have seen this movie, uh, mainly because it is hard to find. Uh, I did hear recently that Neon had picked up the rights to distribute it. They're going to be releasing a new 4K Blu-ray, and uh, it's going to have a re-release in theaters, uh, I've, I've heard. Uh, so hopefully that would also mean that it will be available for purchase and or to stream through any of the services, because this movie is not available to purchase or to stream anywhere. Uh, I wish it was. I, I mean, at least, like, I don't understand why movies just aren't available through iTunes or Amazon, at least to purchase. I understand streaming rights and all that kind of stuff, but at least somebody make money off of these movies that people want to see. Uh, and uh, this is a movie that's, you know, it's a tough watch. It is a brutal movie. And it's a movie that I was looking forward to watch. It is part of the Vengeance trilogy, uh, which is an unofficial trilogy of movies by Park Chan-wook. You have uh, the movie I reviewed last week, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance. You have Old Boy. And then you have Sympathy for Lady Vengeance, which I will be reviewing next week, which I am looking forward to. Uh, But I was excited to go back and revisit this movie that i have not seen i was able to acquire this film uh which is tough because it you do need subtitles sometimes you can find movies uh sometimes foreign movies are difficult to find but you can find them but maybe they don't have subtitles obviously i don't speak korean so i need subtitles i was able to find a version of this movie with subtitles thankfully was able to watch it uh, this, of course, is I would consider it to be a neo noir. I don't know if it's if it's officially categorized as such, but it does have a noir type vibe to it. It is a mystery of sorts. It does have action moments. It is a very dark film, uh, and it's a film about pretty unlikable characters. Similarly to Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, uh, but this movie really finds a way to like it, it it takes the the contempt and the hatred you may have for a particular character and it reveals a whole other layer of monstrosity that is really the mastermind at play with this this movie and it really has there is some complexity this this movie will force you to grapple with some complex emotions uh, as far as how you relate to these characters. Uh, at least for me, definitely it did. Uh, and, you know, it allows you to have sympathy similarly to the previous film, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance. It, it, it forces you to have sympathy for characters that are in many ways unsympathetic characters. Uh, but because humanity is so complex, because people are so complex, because people make mistakes, people can be led down roads that will lead them to making wrong choices. Uh, you can have sympathy for for very complex, very dark characters uh, in very disgusting situations. With all that said... I am probably going to be spoiling this movie. <laughs> I mean, I am going to be spoiling this movie. Don't get me wrong. But it is it is uh, an amazing film that if you get a chance to watch it, if you haven't watched it, there is a remake that I'm mildly interested in watching that Spike Lee did with uh, Josh Brolin. I've tried to watch it a couple times, and I just couldn't get into it. But after having watched this one and getting a fresh 
like a refresh on this movie in whole and really because reviewing it, taking notes on it and all that kind of stuff. Um, I am kind of interested to watch the remake to see how, because I can't imagine, I cannot, even though it's Spike Jones, like, or Spike Lee, Spike Jones, I, I, what is it? Now I'm getting confused here. Uh, who did the first old boy? Um, I can't imagine because it is a U.S. remake that it would have the same plot as this movie. Like, just in any way, it kind of feels feels like it wouldn't. Um, let's see here. Old boy. Spike Lee. Josh Brolin. Elizabeth Olsen. Samuel L. Jackson. But the performances in this, like, I've watched the beginning of Old Boy, the remake, and I just, I can't imagine the performances reach the level that Park Chan-wook gets from his actors in this one, who is uh, uh, Choi Min-sik and Yu Jing-tae, Yu Ji-tae, are the, the leads in this one, and uh, Kang, Yi, Kang Hee Young plays me do uh great performances i mean the lead is the guy who plays desu is amazing and uh let's get into it um because this character it opens with this character desu like this movie is showing you that he is a bad person right he's it's he's in uh, prison he's in jail he's drunk he's disorderly he does this thing where he's very, like, he he talks shit and then, like, is very sympathetic and very apologetic for what he's doing and then instantaneously on a dime goes back to attack mode. It's just, like, this, like, as soon as his, be as soon as begging doesn't work, he goes back to attack and then back to begging and, then like, he switches on a dime. It's, like, very, very bipolar in that way. Of, of positive and negative of how he treats people who are basically in charge of his freedom in a lot of ways. And you see, you get a taste of that multiple times throughout this movie. And the first time you see that is when he's in prison. He's just a belligerent drunk. He missed his daughter's third birthday because he was out drinking. This movie also has uh, reminded me of Squid Game, the main character of Squid Game. Definitely a different type of a character, but starts out very similarly. Very much these two degenerates, not really good fathers, uh, you know, kind of regularly forget to their their own daughter's birthday. Very similar in a lot of ways, which was which was kind of interesting while rewatching this. Uh, and then he gets disappeared, right? Gets out of, his buddy gets him out of jail. And then even when he's leaving jail, he, like, tells the police to fuck off. But then, like, just ends up getting disappeared. And he's in, like, this hotel room for what ends up being 15 years. And this movie, for a lot of this movie, you, along with they Sue, the big question is why. Who locked him up? Why he was locked up in this place? What's going on? Why was he kept there? Obviously, he's not a good person. So it's like maybe he was p being punished for something. Obviously, it seems like he's being punished for something. What did Desu do to deserve this kind of treatment? So he ends up getting to to get he gets locked up. And we see again when he's being fed, we see that that character trait that he has again where he's like begging he's like been in there for like three months or whatever and he's like begging the person that's giving him food to like give him some information and then like you know going from begging to just like trying to attack him and then going back to begging like we see that character trait of Desu uh, again being shown when he's trying to get information of why he's being locked up and then you see while he's being locked up what they do they end up gassing him with valerian gas that knocks him out, and they, like, clean his room. They give him haircuts. Kind of shows the w w the process they go through to kind of maintain him while he's in this, like, prison. And they use the things that they got. Like, they show them 
collecting a glass, putting it in a, gl- a plastic bag. They show him taking blood from him. And then later on, he has a TV in his room. He's watching the news, and he sees that his wife was murdered, right? Her husband had been missing for a year, so we know that he's been gone for a year. And we find out that Desu's being framed. Like, all of those things, the glass with his fingerprint was placed at the scene. Uh, they used his blood to, you know, put traces of his blood in places. Um, and then wh- the only thing that was taken from the scene was a, a photo book that shows up later, which is brutal. But, like, he he's not only gets disappeared, he's being framed for his wife's murder. So even when he gets out, he's going to be, he's wanted for murder. Then he starts, you see him starting to hallucinate ants, like, in his skin, on his skin. Which I think we also see later on where Me Do, this other character that comes into the story, where she is talking about ants. And there's uh, only one time where she's hallucinated an ant, and it was just one ant. And I think ants represent the thing you're longing for, where while he's stuck in this prison... He's longing for other people. That's why there are so many ants. Like, he's so isolated from everybody. He's longing for just being around the hustle and bustle of people. And for Me Do, her character, for a lot of reasons, is longing for that father figure, right? She's a character that's clearly damaged when we get to see her. And we we very quickly get to know about her that she is damaged. But... I, I believe the ants are a metaphor for the longing of of people where he has a longing of mul- for multiple people because he's been isolated. And for her, she's only longing for basically her dad. She has daddy issues. Uh, so that would be my guess with the, the whole hallucinating of ants, but also to show that he's going crazy. Um, and then he talks about the TV that's in his room, which is interesting, the relationship that you have with your TV, that your TV becomes all of these different things. It becomes the, the clock. It should, you know, tells you what time it is. It becomes your calendar. It becomes your school. It becomes your home. It becomes your church. It becomes your friend. It becomes your lover. It it offers all of these different things to you. And you see when he gets out that like he did learn different things from the TV. It It was his school. You, he got to see time progress. You know, it was one of the ways he was able to keep track of when it was because he had access to news and things like that. Uh, he also, obviously, TV broadcasts would broadcast church sermons on Sunday, uh, which is something that if you never had cable, and I, I'm sure it's maybe even in certain places, like maybe not everywhere, had a channel on Sundays that would broadcast church sermons. But for him, it did. Um, So it shows how it it was those things to him. Obviously, the friend. Obviously, a home. I mean, anybody, when they turn on their favorite show, it makes you feel like you're hanging out with friends. Especially, you know, like shows like Friends or even shows like The Office or Parks and Rec. They're like relatable characters that make you feel like you're friends. And then it also shows how it's his lover where he's watching like, especially when I was a a teenager going through puberty i remember network tv being like one of the only sources of uh of like inspiration in that way uh so it's it's interesting that it it fleshes out that kind of relationship that he had with his tv and what the tv offered him while he was secluded in the hotel room and then we also see him breaking a mirror or glass of some sort multiple times and trying to cut his wrists. We see the scars on his wrists later, uh, but every time he does it, he gets gas, and they show him getting drug out to get taken care of to make sure he doesn't die. Uh, but we see that on multiple occasions he tried to kill himself. Uh, and then eventually, like at, at one point, he ends up getting an extra chopstick, And he uses that chopstick to slowly carve his way out because he knows he has so much time. He starts keeping track of time with giving himself tattoos. Each hash mark uh, represented a year. Uh, So, And he started doing that six years in. And 
eventually gets the chopstick and starts carving his way out of the room, like carving a brick out first and then reaching past the void between walls to start carving his way out. And like you see, he finally, after so much time pass, he finally is able to get the brick out that's on the exterior of the building and it's raining and you see his hand poking through. He like gets a taste of freedom. And it's like just as he gets that taste of freedom in that hotel room, which clearly they've been watching him. We see later that they have they're monitoring all of these rooms. So they clearly saw he was doing these things. And plus they gas him up to cut his hair and stuff so they can they can see where he's at. But he's like, oh, within a month, I'm going to be able to break out of here. But they end up releasing him anyway, like the moment he gets it. And we also see that he gets hypnotized. So there's this question throughout the movie of what was what was the hypnosis all about? Why was he being hypnotized? Why did they let him go? Like they they kept him there for 15 years and then just let him go. And the way they let him go is interesting where he's like inside of a suitcase on top of the roof and they have grass on the roofs there, I guess. And he breaks out, and there's this other guy with a dog, which kind of reminded me of, uh, God, what was that Bong Joon-ho movie? Like, Barking Dogs Never Bite or something like that, where the guy kills, the, throws the dog off the top of the building. It reminded me of that, because there's a guy with a dog on the top of the building. And it seems like he's he s- says this statement of, like, even though I'm a beast, uh, or even though I'm no better than a beast, uh, don't I have the right to live? He says this line and Desu is so excited to be free that he's like, let, I need to tell you my story. And also when he was in prison, he was writing down as a way of just getting it off of his chest and as a way to try and figure out who may have locked him up, wrote like all of these books, right? Just like, notebook after notebook of all of the things that all the bad things that he had done in his life and he by the end he had he had done a lot of bad things in his life like this this movie showing you that Desu is a horrible person not only is he just an alcoholic doesn't really care about his daughter doesn't really care about his wife but he's clearly been a guy who has treated people poorly throughout his entire life so it's like narrowing down who may have done this to him is quite a needle in the haystack type of type of a situation. But when he gets out, he's so desperate to tell people his somebody, his story, uh, like as some like cathartic thing to just get off his chest. Like I need to tell you this because you're here and maybe you'll believe me. And then when he goes, <laughs> when the, the guy who is going to kill himself, he's like, Oh, thank you for telling me my story. Now I'm going to tell you my story. Desu just walks off. He's like, I can't, I can't even deal with that. Which is, which is kind of funny. Like, there are hilarious kind of moments in this. The darkly hilarious moments. That's one when he's riding down the elevator. And it's like he hasn't been around a human being, let alone a woman. And he's in this elevator. And she's super creeped out. And he's just in the corner of the elevator. Just, like, gripping the walls in terror. Because he's never just been around the presence of a human, let alone a woman, in 15 years pretty hilarious steals her glasses which you know are kind of funny but when he when he left like in the suitcase there were his notebooks he got some clothes uh, a wallet and a phone was or actually yeah there's a wallet and a phone watch uh and he ends up going to get sushi i don't know why but he wanted to get a meal go get some sushi Oh, I think it was uh, a restaurant that had been shown on the TV because he knew about the sushi chef. chef. And he went to this sushi place, and he's like, I want to eat something alive. He ends up eating an octopus, which is a pretty iconic scene, like a scene where it looks like, I mean, it looks like he's eating, he actually ate a live octopus. As opposed to if there's a version of that in the Josh Brolin spike lee version it's a guaranteed cg there's no i can't see how any studio would green light eating a live octopus but in this movie that's i mean it may not have been live but it definitely looked like it was live and the tentacles wrapping on his face 
as he's just chomping on it. Pretty brutal. But then there's like this interaction with the sushi chef and he just passes out. And the sushi chef, who is Midu, takes him to her home. And that's where you realize we get to know about Midu. And we get to see how damaged she's it. Or at least we get the inkling of how damaged she's it, she is. Because she read through all of his books as he was passed out. She gave him suppositories because he had a fever. He read in she goes to, to the bathroom and he goes in to try and rape her in the bathroom. And she's like comes out and she's like apologetic. She's like, I understand you've been locked away for 15 years. It must be difficult for you. But that's not how it is. Like you said in your books that you love this song. And that was the song he used to to jerk his stuff while he was locked away. And he's like, listen, when I'm ready, I'm going to sing this song for you. Right. So she's like she brought him home because she is into him. And she's like, OK, after reading all of that stuff that he's done, she's she knows all of his sins. He tried to rape her. She's like, gets him away. But she's like, listen, in time. Right. We'll do this. I'm clearly into you. But not like this. When I am ready, then I will sing the song and you will know and get yourself ready. And don't worry, I may resist. But I want you to keep going. Which is like red flag, red flag, red flag. But he's clearly damaged. He's a bad person regardless, but also been locked away for who, who knows what, what reason. He doesn't know. She's going to help him out. So at least he has this like this person that's going to help him out and it's a young attractive woman that's going to help him out but it's like clear that we see because she talks about the ants and she you know we see her visualizing the ant on the subway and that's where it for me it seems like ants represent people in that he was hallucinating ants because of his longing to be around people again and her seeing the one ant, because she's like, I always, I only, you know, I've only visualized an ant, and it, but it was only one. And it wasn't like, I wasn't crazy, I guess, so I wasn't the same type of whatever, broken that you are. But still very interesting. And then they go on this search Right, because while he was locked up, he always ate these fried dumplings. And one time in the fried dumplings, there was a piece of the menu or something, or the receipt was stuck to one of them that said Blue Dragon. So they start, he, she like becomes, so he's like the investigator, he's the private eye, and she's there helping him out. And they're, you know, starting to investigate all of the different restaurants that have potentially this and he, he he would know the taste 15 years of eating the same dumplings he knows exactly what it tastes like which i can't imagine you know oh just randomly while i was walking my dog the other day i smelled bubble bubble yum it was like bubble yum or bubblicious but it it's a gum that has a specific smell a pungent smell and somebody must have been chewing it like at a house like i'm in a residential area i'm not like even in a downtown area so it's like that smell wafted a long dist a long distance and i haven't chewed chewing gum in forever let alone bubble yum but that's a smell that's like just etched in your brain in my brain in the same way that that's the exact flavor texture everything of these dumplings are etched in the brain of Desu. So they're going around trying to find this place, trying to just get some kind of clue to get him to where he was. I want to take a quick break from the show to let you all know that there is official merch for the Ray Taylor Show. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com. You can get t-shirts, different artwork available, different designs, all on high quality materials. 
in all the sizes. There's also iPhone cases made of biodegradable material. That's right. This is not bad for the environment. This is good for the environment. So all of those designs that are available on t-shirts are also available on phone cases designed by me, sold by me. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com to support the Ray Taylor show and promote it out in the world so all of the people in your life can see that you are a fan of the Ray Taylor show. Now, let's get back to that very show right now. And then he finally finds it, right? He doesn't want her to help. Gets a hammer, and there's the epic hammer scene, right? He finally finds the the restaurant. It's like a restaurant way out of the way. It's like the Purple Blue Dragon. It's a weird name. Finds this place. Follows the delivery guy to the, the, ho- the building that he was locked up at. Goes with him up the elevator to like the 7.5 floor. And it's like, it's an, he gets his information, right? He, he pulls this dude's teeth that runs the thing to get all the information uh, of who locked, or he doesn't even get that. But we find out even that that place is like, it's like a private prison that like if they will kidnap you and then lock you up, which you have to pay for them to kidnap you, unless you're locking the person up for more than six months, in which case they will kidnap them for free. So it's like a truly private prison where somebody paid this service to lock him up for 15 years. And specifically 15 years for a reason. But he gets all this information, pulls the teeth. There's an epic fight. This, the hallway scene fight is amazing. Which, like, it's a fight that's like, he's using this hammer against all these guys that work there, all the security guys that work there. And at first it's sloppy because so many of them are after him at once. And then as the fight goes on, he ends up getting stabbed. As the fight goes on and people start getting hurt, it like ends up becoming more choreographed as the fight goes on, which is pretty great. It goes from the hammer to him ending up boxing. And it's sweet. There's like a scene when he first gets out of the prison, of this prison, where he's been imagining how to fight for for a decade and he goes to this like a bunch of kids on the street and is like let's see if if imagining if this imaginary training pays off and he ends up beating them all up it's like yep that worked in a similar situation he had a, an imaginary situation where when he was trying to rape me do right in his head while in prison he thought that would work and then that was the imaginary thing that didn't work but the fighting thing did. And again, we see like he's got good boxing and it's well choreographed. It's a great fight scene that starts off messy of like just hordes of people. And then it ends up being, you know, more precise, picking people apart. Chris boxing, great choreographed fight scene. You know, and, and he ends, he leaves and he just bloodied. And somebody in the street sees him, and we, the person that sees him and helps him and tells him, gives the driver the address to me, Do's place, was a guy that knows who he is. And he's like, oh, shit, he was there. Right? As he wakes up at me, Do's place, she's passed out from helping bandage him up because he knows that, right, that dude knew that me, Do would help him. And it's kind of a weird situation, this, this, this relationship in a way that Desu has with uh, Wu Jin, who was the guy in the street, who's the mastermind guy. Because he's like, he kind of does things beneficial for Desu, but all of it is part of like this master plan, right? We're, we think we're on a ride with Desu to get revenge on the person that locked him up. But throughout this whole journey of revenge is all part, is all set up, is all choreographed by Wu Jin. Like every aspect of this, the fact that he's teamed up with Midu is part of the, the master plan. 
The fact that he found him is part of the master plan. Like, everything is still choreographed, and you don't even find that out to way later. Because you're just on this ride with Daesu, because as the audience, you're like, you want to know why he was locked up, who was locking him up, and we kind of find out who it is. But the why, why was he locked up? Why did they let him go at 15 years? So he goes back. There's a situation where he finds out that the guy, Wu Jin, has an apartment across the way. So why he goes there, he ties up Me Do because he doesn't want her to follow him. Because he doesn't trust her. And he confronts Wu Jin. And there's this story that he has, he got a heart transplant. And that he has a remote to kill himself whenever he wants. And that he has five days to find out why to either kill him or he kills himself. So it's like a situation where even though he knows who, he doesn't know why. He has to, he has to figure out why. The, the mystery isn't complete yet. The answer wasn't to find out who. Who is just another clue into why. But why he is having this confrontation with Wu Jin and his security guard, Mr. Han, back at the original room, at Mi Du's room, where she's tied up, she is now being molested by the gold tooth guy and his crew. He runs over there, and it ends up being they're going to be a fight, but they end up getting paid off, so they don't do anything. But she's all tied up. And it's just like this. It's crazy because it's like, oh, they're right. He's right there. He could have killed him. He could have. Could have ended it right there. But if he did, he never would have known why. And knowing why he was locked up for 15 years is such an important question. Probably shouldn't have. Like hindsight, knowing where this movie goes... He should have killed him there and just not worried about the why. But anyway, they run off. He uh, threatens to, after they, the, the gold tooth guy and the, the hallway crew, the, after they get paid off, like somebody shows up with a case of money for them to not do anything to him. Uh, Daesu threatens to cut off his hand for touching her, her breast. And Daesu and me do, they run off. They're like, we're just going to get out of here. They find a room, drive away, find a hotel room somewhere. And she, on the drive there, she finds out, like, she finds out that, like, he is, D Daesu is being attacked by Wu Jin. Wu Jin is killing wants to kill all of the women that Daesu is in love with because he cannot protect his women right Wu Jin killed his wife because it's part of the plan he framed Daesu for it and now he's going to kill Mi Du if he doesn't find out figure out the why and because of that she realizes that oh he loves her so she starts singing the song in the car. So when they get to the hotel room, there is a sex scene. And you, you kind of put it together that she's losing her virginity. Which is just, you know, just another level of how kind of damaged she is in a lot of ways. She just turned 18. Potentially a virgin. But then you see after they're passed out that that room is being gassed. It's like, oh no, they wake up and there's a box there. And in the box is a hand. So you know that it's like the, the box, the decoration of the box is the same decoration as the scarf that he got when he got out of the hotel room all bloody and the guy in the street when Wu Jin found him in the street and put him in the, the car to go to me do's house the scarf the design on the scarf is the same as the design on this box that has the severed hand in it and the hand is clearly 
the hand of the guy with the gold teeth who ran the private prison. So it was like this gift. It's like, listen, you wanted this guy's hand. Here you go. You got yourself a gift. And they realize that he's probably being bugged. Go gets all the bugs out. And then he finds out, like, he's doing this investigation, brings his friend in, goes to meet his old friend who helped him get out of jail in the first place. And they're doing their online. He runs a, a you know, a internet cafe. And they find out that it's part of, like, they were schoolmates. And then he finds out that, like, oh, it was, like, this guy's sister killed herself he's like why did she, did he did day sue get her pregnant no why did she do this and then he has this he gets a memory day sue gets a memory of back at school he witnessed Wu jin who's a photographer taking pictures of his sister in a classroom he sees Wu Jin start to fool around with his sister start to open up her blouse and suck it on her tits and and she's like she's into it she's like pulls out her mirror and she's like watching it in the mirror and in the mirror she ends up seeing the reflection of Dae Su spying on them through the window so that was that was it and he like it was his last day he was moving to a different school and he told his friend that he saw what he saw oh he's Wu Jin is hooking up with his sister right one rumor then he left that rumor spread around school so much so that Wu Jin's sister started believing it and started having like stopped having a period and started getting a belly and it's like this psychosomatic thing that can happen where you can convince yourself you're pregnant she was never pregnant but her body starts reacting as if it were and the rumors keep spreading and people think that she is pregnant that her brother did impregnate her even though obviously he didn't which is crazy it's just crazy but he find, finally finds out kind of like, okay, that's, that's like he was, he's mad because I found out. So he's not a good guy. <laughs> like we find out that Wu Jin is like, oh, he was having in, his incestual with his sister. And we find out that the, her brother was the mastermind of everything, that he is her sister, that girl is Daesu. Like, she, like, they find out that she killed herself, and then in that they find out that he was her brother and that, you know, that's what it is. Gets rid of the bug, so he ends up having to go spy on them in person, and he's spying on his friend at the Internet Cafe, and his Internet Cafe buddy is like, yeah, she was like a slut. She slept around with a bunch of people, so she, she probably got pregnant. And killed herself. Like he doesn't know exactly what the story is yet. But because he doesn't like this guy talking about his sister. Wu Jin kills Daesu's friend at the internet cafe. So he knows now who it is. Kind of knows why. And also he knows that he just lost his friend. Like this dude, Wu Jin, killed his friend. So I think to protect Mi Du, he has, he takes her to the gold tooth dude who lost his hand. He returns the ring to him. He's like, my enemy, enemy of my enemy is my friend. Kind of a deal. So kind of allies with that guy. And he's like, here, I need you to watch me do which she wasn't too stoked about that but for her protection because that's the thing he was going to threaten to kill her or whatever 
and also maybe trust because he doesn't trust people gets her locked up there and he's going to go confront Wu, uh, Wu Jin ends up going trying to get through the elevator which is funny he ends up you know they end up showing up and then you see how you see the code that he couldn't figure out and he tells them in the elevator it's like you slept with your sister it's like I know what happened and there's this look that Wu Jin gives Mr. Han and they get there and then you kind of get all the pieces kind of get put together where you realize that like you know he finds out that it was his tongue his rumor that he spread that caused all of this to happen that one telling his friend that one time then it spread throughout the school she ended up getting all the symptoms of being pregnant even though she never had Wu Jin never actually had sex with her they fooled around or whatever, did other things, which she was fine with. They were both into. But she couldn't take it anymore. She couldn't take the fact that, you know, she started to believe she was pregnant. You know, and because of that, all of those things, she needed to kill herself. But you find out there's this moment where you find out what everything's all about. And the revenge was really Wu Jin getting revenge on Daesu. Unjustly. Like, you want to talk about getting back at somebody. First off, you were the one fooling around with your sister, okay? Like, you should hold some responsibility for your actions. Not that Daesu is a great guy, but he's, he told one person something he saw which was true and honest but it's a secret you didn't want getting out and that ended up spreading and people around you knew what was happening so he wanted to put Daesu in that same situation and when he opens up the box again decorated the same as that scarf and he sees the photo, photo album that was stolen from, him, from his house. And he starts flipping through the pages of him and his wife and his young daughter, baby, the baby that w was a baby when he was still free. And he starts seeing this baby start to grow up. And then he realizes that that baby is me do. Like as the audience, you're like, holy shit. Let's take a little break from the show to promote the many faces. That's right. I am also an artist. I do ink paintings on paper of abstract faces. A new face, a new painting gets released every single day over at InspiredDisorder.com. So head on over to my website to purchase original artwork directly from the artist. Also, there are prints available for select images head on over to inspireddisorder.com buy original art buy prints if that's your jam if you want eight by ten prints on high quality paper also if you're looking to wear some art there are shirts available with original artwork by myself select faces from the many faces are also available in t-shirt form you go to inspireddisorder.com you buy original artwork you buy prints you buy shirts you're supporting an artist directly. And if you're the type of person that likes to invest in NFTs, there are also NFTs available for select faces. Go to InspiredDisorder.com now. And now let's get back to the show. Like, it is so mind-blowing when you realize that Wu Jin set up this whole thing in order to get day sue to have incestual relations with his own daughter in order to get back at him for spreading a rumor telling one person that he was fooling around with his sister like you want to talk about some evil shit like day sue is a bad guy Wu jin is an evil monster and Dae Su had become an evil monster, right? There's 
multiple reference to that. There's also a thing that's referenced throughout the movie that a grain of sand and a rock fall at the same speed in water. Technically, they do it in air as well. But Daesu is the piece of sand. Wu Jin is the rock. As far as evil goes, like there is a level of monstrosity that day that Wu Jin is constructing this entire thing. This elaborate plan, locking him up, taking him away from his kid before his kid is, you know, she was like three. Right. Locking him up for 15 years until she becomes legal. Right. I guess. I don't know if that's specific, but probably a way for him so he wouldn't have a problem with the age difference or at least her age, I would imagine. But locking him up for a a amount of time for him to for her to grow up. Hypnotizing him and her. For specific things in order for them to fall in love with each other. Like the whole interaction at the sushi restaurant, the reason he went to the sushi restaurant, the reason she reacted, the reason the phone rang a certain way and that he said a certain thing on the phone caused her to react by holding his hand and him reacting from his hand being touched to him passing out. Like all of those things were meticulously constructed by this hypnosis, this, this, uh, this hypnotist. And they were both, you know, genetically, since they are related, both sus- highly susceptible to being hypnotized. But despite that, it's, it's difficult to hypnotize somebody to fall in love with somebody else. And when you're getting all this stuff explained, you're like, holy shit. And same thing with Desu. Like, in his mind, like, you... Like, he's finding out that he just had sex. He took his daughter's virginity. Like, the song, the way, the reason why she's so broken, the reason she clearly has daddy issues, clearly into older men, you know, telling him that, like, listen, if I resist, I need you to keep going. Right. All of those things are red flags generally associated with women that have severe daddy issues, abuse, things of that nature. All makes sense. But also so horrific that it was masterminded by this guy to get back at him, to make him suffer the same humiliation that he suffered, even though. Wu Jin and his sister did it freely and willingly. They weren't manipulated into their situation. But as revenge, the rock, the the massive weight of revenge that Wu Jin had towards Daesu versus this grain of sand of just a horrible person is just disgusting. But that photo album reveal is just brutal. And then you see him again. You see Daesu again. Similarly to when he was in jail for being drunk. Similarly to when he was in the private jail for 15 years. Where he goes from being apologetic to attacking to begging. Right? That shift going back and forth to being, you know, sorry to being... Like, I'm going to, from head to toe, I'm going to mutilate you and destroy you. And then he goes to being like, oh, please don't do it because there's a box, right? The box, at which is like, what was in that box? We never find out what was in that box. At me do, that me do had at the, with the gold tooth guy. Don't know. Maybe it was... A similar album, but of of Desu. Or it could have been completely different, right? It could have been because Wu Jin was laughing, so it could have been just like a nice dress. Who knows? 
right? But we I don't think we ever find out. I don't remember. But it gets to this point where he's like, I'll be a dog. Like, it's weird how throughout this movie, it really touches on a lot of, like, extreme kinks in porn. Like, extreme kinks. I'll be your, your dog. I'll, I'll, I'll be your dog. I'll be your slave dog. The age play, incest, like all of these things are categories. I'm sorry, I spent time on porn websites. But it's kind of crazy how much of this movie is in that kind of depravity of like those darker kind of kinks. But seeing Day Sue, amazing performance. Like, again, I can't see. First off, I can't see this plot playing out in an American film. Secondly, I can't see, um, I can't see, uh, what, what's his name? Um, Josh Brolin uh, groveling uh, at the feet of somebody pretending to be a dog. And then, like, here, I'll never tell a secret. I'll cut my tongue out. Like, when he cuts his tongue out is, like, brutal, brutal brutal and then even when it just shows again like groveling apologizing begging then Wu Jin leaves drops the remote to his heart and then Dae Su just flipping back over it's like oh fuck I'll get you now I cut my tongue out but I like, given any opportunity, I will get you. And then he hits the button, and it turns on the recording of him. Like, he knew the whole time. Like, obviously, there's not a remote control for his heart. But it plays the audio tape of Desu having sex with his daughter. It's like, oh, just another reminder. Like, it's so brutal. That end scene of, like, every step of that is just so brutal. And the constant mental back and forth and, like, momentum that's going on is just crazy. And then you see Wu Jin. It, like, makes this comment of, like, you know, we were able to live with what we did. Wu Jin and his sister. Are you able to live with what you did? Like, we could do, we could live with it. Could you live with it? Obviously, his sister couldn't live with it. But can you live with it? And then he kind of leaves, plays the thing, and, like, ends up killing himself, right? Which, obviously, it's like, what? He has nothing left. Like, his grand, his grand design has come to a conclusion. He's just absolutely decimated Desu's life decimated me do he got his revenge and he has nothing else to succeed in life there's no other ha hill to climb it, so it makes sense he would kill himself and you see Desu it ends with him back at the hip, hip hypnotist asking to forget what he knows Right to live in ignorance, and he wrote her a letter because he can't speak. And in the letter, he writes that same thing that the guy he that he met on the roof after he got released from that prison, who was holding the dog, who ended up killing himself. What he said he wrote in that letter, even though I'm no better than a beast, don't I have the right to live? Which those words hit way different at the end of this film. Even though I'm no better than a beast, right? He slept with his daughter. Took her virginity, assuming. I mean, it's hinted at. A beast. A beast would do that. But even though I'm no better than a beast, don't I have the right to live? And that line is the reason why she decides to hypnotize him. Because he told her the story. That is one thing about Desu. When he wrote down all of his sins. 
when he got out of the prison and needed to tell his story, like he is very open about telling his misdeeds and being honest about ho- how horrible he is. Like that is definitely something that he that changed in him over that 15 years. But it was that line that she ended up doing it. And she's like, if at this point she hypnotizes him, she's like, at this point, you're going to be two people, which he had always kind of been two people like the when you cry, you cry alone. But when you laugh, the world laughs with you. So every time he would feel like down, he would have this insane smile on his face. That duality turning into a monster. And she's like, there will be two parts of you. There will be Desu, who will not know anything. He will no longer know this secret. And then there will be the other part, the monster. And when I ring the bell, the monster is going to take 70 steps. And each step, or seven steps, 70 steps, I forget what it is. It's gonna gonna walk in the opposite direction. Every step is a, a different a new year. Or I think it's seven steps. Each step is ten years, something like that. In which with each step you will forget each time. And at the the seventh step, you will no longer it, that monster will no longer exist. And it ends with me do coming to give him a hug. He's cold. It's snowing, and she's warming him up. She never knows, so she doesn't know the secret. So I assume the end is that he forgets the secret that that monster within him died, supposedly, because he ends up getting that smile at the end. The monster's smile. Like he knows still. Like the, the, the hypno, hypno, like it, like it worked, but there's still a part of him that knows, maybe. The end is like slightly ambiguous. In some ways. Like, does he know? But the intention was for him to maintain his relationship with me, do as it is, but not knowing that she's his daughter. Which is insane. But it's like we're living in a fucked up reality. You know, I don't know. I'm not I'm not justifying it. It's just like a fucked up movie. That has like you're you're dealing with very different levels of depravity and monstrosity. Right. He is still sinking just as fast as that stone is. But he's just a grain of sand. Crazy movie. Just um, that the the hit of like even though going into this movie, I knew where it was going. But when he starts going through that photo album and he sees his daughter grow up into to becoming me do and the realization of all of that is just insane. Insane. A great movie. A dark, dark movie. Dark movie. Uh, and that's part of the reason why I like it. But also uh, just insane. Well written. Well performed. Uh Choi Min Sik is a sick performer, like I, levels above what Josh Brolin can do. But I'm actually kind of interested to see how the American version goes. Like it, I can't imagine it. It like so many aspects of this movie seem like they they wouldn't even get close. But who knows? Uh, but anyway, this has been a super long, in depth talk about Old Boy from 2003. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I spoiled the hell out of it, so obviously if you haven't seen it, but if you have, those were my thoughts on all of the aspects of this movie, which there's a lot to this movie. I had a lot of thoughts. Uh, It's amazing. I think Park Chan-wook is one of the best. One of the best. Like, he knows how to go. Like, so well written, all of his movies so far. And I'm looking forward to watching not only uh, Sympathy for Lady Vengeance, but all of his movies to do a top five coming up pretty soon. So check that out, too. Old boy. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Oh!
much. Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.